everybody. Thanks for having me. So, without further ado, in 2013, Hypoallergic and Tumblr created the world's first Tumblr art symposium, a series of discussions, exhibitions, and essays that were commissioned with intent to archive and acknowledge how Tumblr has altered artistic production. In Ben Valentine's essay, Revisiting Tumblr as Art, he asserts the rather surprising claim that Tumblr has fundamentally altered past conceptions of authorship, value, audience, and reception in regards to artwork. Valentine's argument stems from what he notes as a key element of Tumblr's platform, user anonymity. Tumblr's format only necessitates that users create a unique handle for their username and URL, as you see here. The site also provides the option to include an About Me bio section in one's profile, these being examples. However, sections such as the bio and FAQ are completed at the user's discretion, creating degrees of anonymity formed and enacted by users. The importance of these personal details is subordinated in favor of content on one's Tumblr. Importance in this case refers to how useful different facets of digital platforms are in serving to facilitate social interactions between users. In contrast to Tumblr, Facebook necessitates that one's profile contains personal details, name, high school, college, job, etc., in order to aid and validate interactions between users. Friending someone unknown in real life is antithetical to Facebook's conception of social intercourse. <coughs> This pre-selection process provides users the power to control and curate their digital social circles. Whereas Tumblr is unique in its emphasis on the image and text users blog and reblog, a literal tumble of images, as a means by which to find and reach out to other users with similar interests and aesthetics. Yet Tumblr's emphasis on images and text does not equate to a fissure between the user and processes of blogging and reblogging images and posts. In the teen girl Tumblr aesthetic, co-authored by Alicia Eller and Kate Durbin, Eller and Durbin tie the images produced and circulated by users to the fluctuation and changes of said users' bodies on and offline. The creation of such a connection between the body and the blog is useful because it signals how Tumblr's anonymity provides users a space in which to insert themselves within the processes of image creation, production, and dissemination. This bodily connection is crucial in regards to the interactions and exchanges between queer and female identifying users due to the fact that their bodies are routinely marginalized and oppressed offline and online. Such diminishment is combated with visibility. Whether through selfies or celebrity snapshots, every image thus contributes to the ever unfolding multifaceted performative narrative of one's online identity. These images and content in turn provide the impetus for users to form friendships through shared interests, fandoms, fashions, self-created work, life experiences, etc. While Tumblr's popularity stems from queer and female identifying users utilizing the site as a space in which to openly exchange visceral and emotionally honest dialogue, questions remain regarding how this phenomenon relates to Valentine's assertions regarding the site's subversive nature questions are useful because they open space for digital reconfiguration of the body, including, but not limited to, hypersexualization of the body, the male and female gaze, the selfie, to be theorized as practices with canonical precedence and meaning. These ideas of meaning and precedent are essential in reviewing the digital presence of young female users in regards to cyberspace and the conception of the girl, G-U-R-L as vital elements within a third wave feminist dialogue. To explain, the internet has provided young trans, queer, and women of color the space in which they can actively participate in feminist dialogues in a manner formally unavailable to disenfranchise groups within first and second wave feminism. The freedom the digital provides young users then allows them to create identities distinct yet connected girl and GRO to who they are away from computers. This correlation between IRL and URL is a means by which to better translate the mul multiplicity of ideas associated with an oppressed identity. In order to understand how such conceptions are relevant 
to an overarching comprehension of digital creation in the body within a feminist context, this paper examines Kate Durbin's Tumblr archive, Women as Objects, as a case study. Women as Objects shows how the youthful female body plays an important role in consideration of digital creation. I assess Durbin's archive in conjunction with Ariel Greenberg's formulation of the girlesque to examine the potential of the female body within and without new technologies and the limits and constraints of Greenberg's theory. Durbin's Women as Objects Tumblr archive chronicles posts and images created by teenage Tumblr users from 2011 to 2013. Each post is removed from its original context, typically semi-anonymous teen blogs, allowing for a voyeuristic, consumptive viewing and immersion. The act of viewing is intertwined with such a curious voyeurism due to objects medium and the self-aware aesthetic of each post. The self-awareness stems from conceptions of visibility and performance. Other users will read and reblog uploaded images and text, allowing these posts to enter Tumblr's endless stream of user-generated material. All users are aware of this engagement and that is intrinsic to Tumblr and by extension all digital social platforms. One may be seen and see in return. Such site provides the potential to reconfigure Judith Butler's assertion that interiority is an effect and function of a decidedly public and social discourse. The public regulation of fantasy through the surface politics of the body, the gender border control that differentiates inner from outer. Tumblr has generated a distinct user discourse in which such lines of demarcation between the exterior and interior are nearly non-existent because user engagement dictates how one is perceived. One is known through one's blog. One thus becomes the aggravation of image and text. The performance of the girl is fragmented through the endless stream of reblogs and favorites which compo compose every post note section. This consistent and rapid engagement between users allows for swift interchange in subjectivities, a continuous distancing from any fixed identity. In the case of Durbin's archive, ideas of engagement and interaction between users are crucial to consider because they translate to how users interact with individual posts in relation to the wider array of user posts. The act of tumbling an image, participating within Tumblr's endless folly of images and text, displaces meaning one may derive from said images original context. Instead, one must then inspect how the images interact with one another and glean meaning from their interactions as one of many. Durbin investigates this phenomenon through her archive by participating in this cycle of images saturated by fascination and perhaps longing for the female form and elements of pop culture and commercialism traditionally coded as femme, pop stars, clothes, accessories, etc. Again, this fascination stems from the fact that these visceral bodily images are also images of objectification. They not only break down and commodify the female form in association with these commercial signifiers, but they also originate from the blogs of young femme Tumblr users. This introspective compulsion towards the dissemination and disposal of a hyper-stylized feminine speaks to an inherent desire of 21st century third wave feminism elements of which are espoused by Diane Elam and Kathy Acker. This desire is one for freedom, the freedom to embrace tr the traditional aesthetic trappings of femininity while simultaneously rebelling against any attempt to be defined or codified by such categorizations. Due to this circumvention of any classification, it is difficult to situate and provide precedent for, for production speaking to the intricacies of a young femme experience. A theory that will be useful in this endeavor is Ariel Greenberg's conception of the girlesque. Greenberg coined the term as a means to describe the work being produced by young femme poets in the early 2000s. Much like Tumblr production, these poets created works that simultaneously dissected and subverted gendered experience. Girlesque poets experiment with authorial voice in a manner that allows for deconstruction of identity, gender, and sexuality and a critique of the feminine experience under the shadow of second wave feminism. In the 2012 Girlesque Anthology, Greenberg herself categorizes the theory as an emerging zeitgeist of the teen girl, one built upon the legacies of burlesque, Batkin's carnivalesque, the grotesque, and riot girl. Placing the girlesque within some elements 
of this historical lineage is crucial because it helps to situate present experimentation with sexual performativity and the abject feminine as a practice definable and traceable with past canonical precedent. The girlesque does not solely exist within 21st century poetry. It may be found in any art that serves to deconstruct the female rituals of self-display, <coughs> excuse me, and the libidinal economies that encourage and depend on them. This fascination with the feminine, or what is traditionally coded as femme, also necessitates the girlesque's lineage because of the historical precedent of marginalization and erasure. Fem feminine bodies have been routinely cast aside and otherized throughout the broad scope of history in a manner reminiscent of users creating safe, free spaces on digital platforms, girlesque writers and visual artists produce zones of contention from which one may explore similar ideas regarding identity and the gendered body. The girlesque exists within a wide spectrum of creation, but in order to better understand how digital platforms may alter or shift its performativity, purpose, and connection with the body, I, cr I contacted Kate Durbin in hopes of an interview. <laughs> Luckily, she was in Chicago for a book tour, and we were able to meet. What I will read now is our most recent correspondence. <laughs> Dear Annette, I'm terribly sorry for the delay in my response. I've had sporadic access to Gmail the last few weeks. In your email, you stated that you were interested in the network connection element of the digital girlesque. I very much see Tumblr and other social media platforms as a means by which to create a safe utopian space. I completely agree our interests intersect and look forward to hearing from you. Best, Kate Durbin. Dear Kate, thank you so much for your kind response. For a while, I was unsure if you're going to respond to my email, so I was quite surprised to not only see a response, but an invitation to meet. It was quite fortuitous that you happen to be in the area for your E! Entertainment book tour. I'm so glad the weather was nice enough that we could meet, meet as you wished. After spending the day with you by the water, I think I better understand the parallels you drew between Tumblr and other social media platforms and the ocean in your Mermaid Slut article. The flow of patterns, trends, and aesthetics is exactly that, a flow. Like water or some, idea, or some ideas or data may evaporate or freeze effectively blocking our access to such thoughts. What I'm still unsure of is how young women typify the image of the mermaid. Are we really that comfortable anywhere? Mermaids are built for water, beautiful, deadly, and immobilized on land. Many girls swim easily and freely on the internet in that glittering, twitching, fetishized manner you described in many of your past writings. In this manner, our bodies become inextricably linked to the process of interaction, i.e., the posts, writing, direct messages, snaps that show what's wanted or desirable. These tenuous shivers of communication are our bodies, as beautiful things consumed again and again. The question that remains in my mind regarding those processes is how do we remain in our communion with our own <coughs> bodies? Are we not ghosts at this point? Not all mermaids can swim. End at email. The last we spoke, I asked her if I could grow up. I must continue to watch what happened. Trademark, Bravo Television. <laughs> to close, in my thesis, I will further investigate the parallels between the body and space making present within the work of Carolee Schneemann and the dissection of feminine voyeurism in Hannah Wilk's Starification Object series. This analysis assists in constructing a commonality between girls on the internet and past artists whose practices have entangled feminism, the body, and gender. This examination will be useful in solidifying the internet presence of young users as an important, vital, vital and changeable within my